Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at a trajectory problem where you end up having a two equation, two unknown. So this comes up every now and then. It just depends on what your starting information is. And so I've selected a problem here where we look at Mike Powell, the current world record holder for the long jump which his long jump is 8.95 meters. And then I make an assumption that's probably not bad, but you know, this is still my assumption that he launches himself at about 22 degrees from the horizontal as he's jumping. As long as we also assume that the initial launch height is the same as his landing height, this, believe it or not, is enough information to go ahead and solve for the problem. And so what we have to do is we have to pick it apart and figure out how we're going to do that. So you have this initial launch here where these heights are the same. I'm showing that parabolic path. Remember you have symmetry here on these particular types of problems. And that is crucial for us to be able to solve this. One of the key components of symmetry is that the initial velocity vector vi has a lot of relation to the final velocity vector over here, vf. The main thing that we want to identify, the main thing that's going to be important for us, is that we will note that the y component of this velocity, vi comma y, is actually equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the v final y. That is going to be very useful for my understanding. Also, there's a different approach that you could take that makes use of the idea that v in the y direction up here is equal to zero. I'm not going to take that particular approach as I solve this problem, but you can successfully go about it this way. Just remember that you are only looking at half the problem, and so therefore you would need a half time. Now, the other piece of information that's important that still has something to do with symmetry, I suppose, is that the other component, the v initial in the x, is equal to the v final in the x because there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So gravity is allowing this thing here to change so that it goes from that to zero to this, but there is no acceleration in the horizontal, and so we will not be able to change that velocity vector. Okay, with all that being said, what we really need to do now is we need to focus on this for a moment. And so I'm going to redraw it because I don't think I have quite enough room there. So I have this VI coming up. That's going to be one of my main variables in this thing. And then I have two components. I can crack in a little bit better on these two components. Instead of just calling it VI and the Y, what I can do is use my trig relationships given that that is a right angle. And I can say that vi in the y is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta, where that is theta, because I was just defining that vertical there as the opposite side. And then I can also come down here and I can say vi in the x, this is going to be the adjacent side, and so this will be the cosine function that will allow me to do some work here. So remember that you treat the two dimensions independently in a problem like this. What's happening in the x direction really is not particularly influential on what's happening in the y direction. There are two variables that do link the two dimensions together that you have to keep track of. One is this thing. It links the two because here's an expression that involves vi that's really talking about the vertical, and here's a different expression that involves vi that's talking about the horizontal. So there's one linker, and the other linker, of course, is time, the scalar. Time does not really care if you're in the vertical or the horizontal. That scalar has no direction. It would love to operate in both. So if I come over and I take a slightly different approach, I'm going to log down the information that I possibly might know something about in the y direction. There's the acceleration in the y. I do know that that is negative 0.98 meters per second squared. There's v initial in the y. That is something that I have an expression for right here that is vi sine theta, sine theta. V final in the y is something that I also 
know a little bit about. And remember, I just got through saying that there's a lot of symmetry between this vector and this vector. So VIY here and VFY are identical in magnitude but opposite in direction. So I'm going to make that direction claim with a minus sign. And then I say V final in the Y is VI sine theta again. But it has that minus sign. So there's my opposite direction. Then I have time, which I don't actually know how long Mike Powell was in the air, so that's a big question mark right now. And then, of course, the other thing I could be interested in is how high you go in this particular path. And it turns out that this is just something that I'm not going to be particularly interested in. The main reason is because I'm going to try to link two dimensions together, and that means that I only have two equations that are going to ultimately happen, one for the vertical, one for the horizontal, and I really need both of my linkers in there. Remember, time being a linker, that's got to appear in my equation. So here are my four equations that I'm interested in. Let me go ahead and clear a little board space. So if you go and look at Newton's four acceleration equations and try to pick out the one that has acceleration, VI, V final, and time, you will find that it is this. V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. What I'm going to do, so again, I'm still only in the Y. Don't lose sight of that. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the information that I know. So negative VI sine theta is equal to positive VI sine theta minus 9.8 t. And again, certainly that 9.8 is in units of meters per second squared, but I'm going to try to keep the clutter down. So what I'll do is I'll swing this entire term over there so that I maintain positive, but that's going to be 2 vi sine theta. And I will take this term and I will swing it to the other side. So now I have 9.8 t is equal to 2 vi sine theta. Notice here that I have my two variables that I was talking about, my two linkers. This is going to be one of my equations that has vi and time in it. Ultimately, I think what I'll probably do is I will solve this for time, and then I will set the two equations equal to each other. And you'll see what I mean here in a moment. But come down here in the corner, and let me just write this expression in as t equals 2 vi sine theta divided by 9.8. So that is an expression for time. That is how long Mike Powell is in the air. Reclaiming board. Now we move to the x direction. The x direction has less going on. There is no acceleration. Acceleration in the x is equal to 0. That means that I'm going to be using the equation that is v is equal to d divided by t. And this is all in the x here. So, And again, time is a scalar, so it doesn't need a direction. So I can come down v initial or v final or v just plain in the x because they're all the same. They're never going to change. If you recall, was the cosine function. But I, it was v i cosine theta. And I had that from my original right triangle where I was breaking the components out of the initial velocity vector. dx is equal to 8.95 meters. That is how far Mike Powell was able to jump. And then time is sitting right here. Big question mark. Let's go ahead and solve this guy for time. It is dx over vx. And then I can write down this expression that time is going to be equal to 8.95 divided by vi cosine theta. So now what I will do is I'm going to set the equations equal to each other uh, through time. So I have 8.95 divided by vi cosine. Let's go ahead and get this 22 in there. So remember that was actually given to us. Is equal to 2 vi sine theta divided by 9.8. Notice that on the left hand side the VI is in the denominator and on the right hand side it's in the numerator. That means that those are actually going to combine to a VI squared that's sitting over there and I want to get everything else away from it. So let's have one 
big division symbol. Get all of our numerator stuff over here. So we have 8.95. That was the meters thing. Here we have 9.8. That was meters per second squared. Looks like there's a 2 from the top right that's going to come down. I didn't write it before. This is a known number, 22 degrees. So cosine 22 degrees. Then I have a sine 22 degrees. This means that VI is equal to VI squared. Let's write this intermediate down. So if you're doing this with me, you should probably plug this in. It's kind of sloppy. So VI squared is equal to 126. I'll round that to uh, a 0.3, which means that my final velocity there is the square root of that, and that value is 11.2, and then I'll bring my units back in meters per second. This problem doesn't specifically ask for it, but if you're curious, what was Mike Powell's hang time during this? It was a pretty shallow launch, so it's not going to be a huge number, but I will just plug in my info into that equation. I have 8.95 divided by 11.2 times cosine 22. And we actually find that the hang time is 0 0.86 seconds. All right, excellent. So there we have a solved problem. We've got our initial velocity, which really was tagged at that 22 degrees, don't forget, but that is the hypotenuse value that we just found. And I've got my hang time if I happen to need it. Hopefully everything there made sense to you, and if it did, let your computer know.